after London, um, I think because I didn't get the time that I wanted, I was eager to get back training um, really early. Um, but I took a week off after the marathon and did a little bit of cross training, a bit of weights and very, very little running the week after. Um, it was really mentally refreshing um, and I actually didn't miss running, which was quite strange. I knew that I had this one week where for the, basically the rest of the year I'd be training really hard so I thought to myself, you know what, just, just enjoy yourself, uh, relax and try and switch off physically and mentally. Um, we got back off holiday and I was absolutely raring to go. Um, so the first session back, there was no expectations um, but we headed straight to the track and and I, I kind of didn't really think anything of it because we'd been doing bits of track work um, in the build up to the marathon. Um, and I say I enjoyed the first session back, I thought it was fantastic, um, like my legs felt great, it was nice to be back running fast, fast-ish at that point because everything was just kind of moving, felt quick. Oh. <sighs> Not done yet. <laughs> It's hard being a girl. <laughs> the thing with Haley is that she's got a very non traditional route into the sport. So, you know, most of the people that she races against, even at the marathon, have got a background of moving through the distances, you know, having maybe been racing as a junior or whatever. They spent a lot of time on the track and, and being in touch with that work all the way through, really. Slightly different with Haley because she'd never really been on the track, never really done anything, you know, that was anything other than marathon specific. So there were two bits to it. We had to change the training stimulus in terms of doing that shorter speed work, but the the, the sort of second aspect of that was going to be that she had to learn a lot of the sort of skills around pacing sessions, around understanding that increased intensity and stuff. So she wasn't going back to something that she'd been away from but was familiar with. She was starting something that's pretty much brand new. So we went to Tipton to do a 3,000 metres, um, but there was just something that didn't feel right. I got there and I just said to, I said to Dan, I just don't feel right, I don't, I don't want to do it. And he, he said, you always say this. I said, no, I know, I know, I always say this. And, I said, but it feels different this time. It said, something's just not right. My head's not in it. And okay, I did a couple of strides and I just felt flat. I just didn't, there was no oomph there. There was no, oh yeah, raring to go. Can't wait to go. And we just kept saying, as soon as the gun goes, you'll be fine. The gun went out, wasn't fine. It was, it was a matter of just get me to the end, even just being 3K, not even two miles. And I, if I could have cried during the 3k race, I would have. It was just awful and I felt everyone was staring at me. I felt paranoid, I felt self-conscious. I felt, what are you doing here? Um, what's the point? Um, I just wanted to give up. I thought, what? there's just no benefit to this at all. I crossed the finish line um, slower than I ever have before in a 3k. I do 3k reps on the track faster than that. Um, it was just the anxiety was debilitating and I've never, never felt that the anxiety got that bad, that it actually affected my performance. I've always had anxiety before a race, as we all do, but it was just, it was debilitating. And even Dan said, I said, I've never seen anything that bad before. I cried roughly for two hours, didn't sleep a wink for two days. And so, yeah, doing me wrong, like looking back now, it seems really, really over the top, but I just thought, I can't do this. I can't do track. I just can't get there. It's, I'm not gonna be able to get my head around it. I knew that was really pivotal, and it sounds very melodramatic, I know, but you know, and it, and it kind of was very melodramatic, you know, someone was sitting down on the ground and refusing to move, and that was the emotional state she was in. Um, and I, at the same time, I knew that getting to the track and starting the first rep of that session was very important to her kind of 
view of running her future development. It felt really pivotal. So I felt like, I suppose my first reaction was, like, this is a huge moment. You need to be, you need to get this right. And it suddenly, you know, it'd been building up and building up and building up. And, but at the same time, I was quite shocked. So suddenly I felt like, oh, wow, I've got to get, I've got to get this right now. Otherwise, this is going to have some long-term consequences. It might mean that she doesn't, you know, she doesn't run. And, and I, you know, again, I'm feeling emotions myself in that situation. So I was catastrophizing, thinking, oh, you know, you're going to wreck this career by not being a good enough coach in this moment. And, you know, she, you, you could sort of destroy all this potential and, and all that sort of stuff, which is actually, looking back, like quite self-aggrandizing because it's not really about me at all. But <clears throat> I suppose what you want to feel in that in that moment is some agency over it so that you can actually affect things. So maybe that's why you think of it in those terms. It's not like I think I'm the be all and end all and can influence things that much. You know, it's ultimately everything's got to come from her. But I suppose I just wanted to think, right, have I done everything I possibly can to make sure that she's, if she is going to walk away from it, she's doing it for the right reasons. And, you know, I think fairly clearly that wouldn't have been the right way to make that sort of decision. You know, you don't. You don't make good decisions when she was in the sort of mindset she was in, or, or certainly the chances of good decisions are reduced. So. But normally I think she's got about 90. You're here. So proud of you. So proud of you, Robert. That's fucking us. But let's be honest, what's going to happen now is you're generally back to yourself, which means that at some point tonight I'll get a message saying, yeah, but it was really slow. I'm just getting slower. I'm just getting slower. What's the point? Yeah, I've already said it twice. Yeah, I think I'm getting slower. Just, yeah, I'm just <laughs> like you're not getting slower, though, are you? I might be. You're not. I've peaked. You've peaked. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. that's not true, is it? That's probably our biggest challenge, isn't it? Is that you've got I'm peaking. your frame of reference is very short. You haven't had years and years at this and, and you've not had a period where you've been injured or you've plateaued for a significant amount of time. Yeah, yeah. But but given that yeah right. but given that, that you, do you think that puts you at disadvantage from the mm. others because they've been through that and yeah. know how to be a bit more patient with it. Yeah. And it's more difficult for you because you've only just had everything go in mm. one direction. Yeah. That's what makes it challenging for you emotionally mm. I think. Like I always feel like I'm the only one that's had a bad session or the only one that struggles or the only one that gets totally yeah. exhausted all they want to do is just curl up in a ball and yeah. sleep and sometimes you you struggle to understand why you've not got faster from one week to the next yeah which is that's challenging for me yeah. because I want you to enjoy it and feel progress but it's hard because it's physically not possible to get like faster in a straight line and one session to the next mm. but I sometimes feel like that's what you're expecting of yourself yeah I do yeah I always expect to one session I can run a yeah. number this easily and yeah. then the next session and why can't I run that and it'd be easier okay here's for context in 12 months you took the same amount of time off your marathon PB that it's taken me 10 years to take off mine so in one year you took 14 minutes off 14 minutes has taken me 10 years. It depends, doesn't it? Because it's a fluke. It's I just <laughs> had a good day. Yeah. Bar London. And you've seen how easy it is to fluke things in London. Because mm. you didn't do any training, did you? And no. so you just turned up and ran. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, that's progress of a kind tonight. Toes behind the line. Yeah, I think I felt a lot better with it being the track that we train on. So it kind of felt just like a training session. Um, sometimes I get really anxious about, <laughs> this is going to sound really strange, about wearing a crop top because I feel very exposed. When, you're, when you do run um, and race, it, everyone, everyone does it, but I still feel like I'm the odd one out. Um, so I decided after Tipton, because I wore a crop top, I'll um, try wearing my vest 
Um, I'll put racing flats on instead of spikes. Um, I'll go and just do a normal warm up where we usually do. Um, I'll not think of anyone else. I'll just literally rock up and enjoy myself. And when everyone arrived, it was really relaxed. And I felt, you know what, I'm not gonna let this anxiety get the better of me this time because I spelt, spelt so many hours upset after last time. Um, it just really wasn't worth it. So when we, we got there, um, I did some strides and I felt like, yeah, I'm re ready to go now. I'm ready to just not let it beat me this time. And I felt a lot more in control. Um, I wasn't overly happy with the time, but like you say, PBs aren't always, it was a PB, but <laughs> um, PBs aren't always about the time. Um, it was more for me to be able to get over the fact that I've just done a track race and I've not cried for four hours. <laughs> so that was, that was um, a great benefit in himself and to not feel um, like people were staring at me, to not feel like so out of my control. I just thought, you know what, no, last time it was awful. It can't actually be worse. So, and it wasn't, it wasn't amazing. But <laughs> I still had a little wobble. Um, but then we went and did a session afterwards and I felt like I was flying again. She's got, you know, a, a big aerobic capacity and the strength and conditioning <laughs> required to be able to harness that and not break down as a result some people are you know their horsepower is capable of kind of you know causing an injury almost because they're you know they haven't got the um the, yeah that that robustness that you need to be able to put up with putting you know the, the, the kind of training that your lungs are capable of of doing so i think good balance there um psychologically very good at suffering um i think you know there's a sort of cliche that you know the longer distances are about suffering the, sh the the kind of middle distance and the perhaps the shorter distances are about hurting and that was one of the things that we had to try and change that there's a natural conservative tendency if you're a marathon runner because you know the potential consequences of you know going into the red and she had a very stark reminder of what those were so I think there's a natural reluctance to really like blow yourself up in a session which sometimes can be necessary and when you're trying to get you know trying to develop that speed stuff not that you don't want to pace sessions well but I think sometimes you can only find the where the edge is by going slightly over it occasionally um, so I suppose that was yeah I would say definitely definitely robust physically and mentally um, kind of really really strong a, you know and beneath everything else a real determination I guess um, and so that was probably the thing that in the moments when I had the most doubts about how you know, she was struggling with things or whatever I was always able to reassure myself that actually she's, she'll overcome whatever this is at some point you just have to hang in there it, I think it's been rather than individual moments I think it's kind of a gradual process albeit over only a few weeks that what she said away from here in the last couple of days is how fit she feels how strong she feels how ready she feels how much more relaxed about everything she is and you know that that's been achieved in, in a short time but that that has felt like a very long time as well and so I'm really, you know, she's overcome a lot of demons in that period, um, and that'll be hugely valuable. Um, and, and probably the biggest one for me would be that she's now willing to recognise that she doesn't have to come at every bit of positivity with a with a with a balancing bit of negativity. So if we say that session went well, or you ran well there, or that was a good time, or whatever it was, she would used to respond with, yeah, but such and such is running much quicker or yeah but that's slow compared to what I should be doing or you know some immediately some way to kind of I don't know, undermine anything positive but she's really stopped doing that and I think that that's vital because it's important that she's confident not certainly not overconfident you don't want to get you know any any hint of that in distance running because it'll bring you back to earth pretty quickly but I think that 
having that faith in your in the work that you've done and the fitness that you've earned is is really important when you commit during a race because you need to have that confidence that you're going to be able to withstand what's coming All that mattered was I'm going to go out there and run my best, run with Dan and do what I enjoy. And there were so many demons I had um, from Tipton that I just literally wanted to run a good time um, and overcome all of that. Because I'd overcome it at the Birmingham track, I wanted to kind of um, replay that into the Tipton 5000 at the track and not feel anxious and nervous. And I genuinely didn't feel any sort of nerves before the 5,000 and I don't actually know why. Um, I felt nervous when I was stood there watching um, my friend Molly uh, run because I knew that she'd always give it her all. She's a fantastic runner. And like, I thought, oh, if she can do it, I can do it. And, and we'd push each other during sessions. And we always say like, um, oh, I always think of you when I'm pushing really hard because I know you'd push really hard. And I thought to myself, you know what? She is giving it her all today. And I thought, I don't want to let her down because if I don't do it or if I don't give it my best because I don't want to say to her, oh, I know you gave it your all, but I didn't. And as a team, I think it's so important to bounce off each other in a way that I always think, oh, Molly, Molly would never give up. She'd never give up. And she says the same to me. And it's really, really nice because during a hard session, I think of people that would say to me, oh, Hayley would never give up at this point. And, but the amount of times I think, you know what, I actually would, but then, but I don't. And it's kind of, no, just push a little bit more, one more lap, one more rep, one more minute, anything that just gets me through. And it was, I absolutely loved the 5,000 meters. I don't even know what it was. I felt so in control. I felt that I got stronger as the run went on. I felt more like I could do it. And it was a massive confidence boost to run a 16.05 and feel that there was so much more in the tank and it was really quite two days after doing the 3000 and 1500 on a Sunday so to but I set my expectations so high I wanted to break 16 um, but I know that I could have on a on a good day um, but I just really enjoyed it It really hit home that you no, know, I actually can be quite a good athlete. Like, I think I thought to myself for the first time that I actually feel strong. I feel brave. I feel, you know what? No, I deserve to be here. And um, it was a matter of, I think I thought to myself, just don't come last. <laughs> um, and I, did, I said we came in the middle of the pack, and there was, say, I think there was about 20 runners. Um, and I just thought, you know what, we're all athletes, we're all equal. Um, it just, I really wanted to get my teeth into a good race. And it just so happened that, say, the men there on the day were the athletes that I was there to help me put down a good time. And uh, if there were women there in that race, it would have been amazing because, say, it would have been an extra competitor or something. But it was, it was just, I don't know, I just felt so happy to have got to where I am and being the fastest race with a load of men and it just felt really cool <laughs> and yeah I just really enjoyed it. Great work Hayley, big last mile, you've got this. I think because I just trusted Dan and I wanted to trust my fitness, um, I wanted to put down a good time um, and to enable qualification for the British Champs this summer. Um, which is, I think, 1610. Um, so I did that. Um, but I also, there was so much more that I thought to myself, you know what, I might just be having a really good day. It might not feel slow, but it, it does feel it. It might not be slow, sorry, but it does feel it. Um, and I just felt so comfortable and so relaxed. My breathing felt relaxed. I felt my arms were moving right. And it was just, I wanted to be there for the first time at a track race. I actually wanted to be in the race. I wanted to put down a good time and it really did matter. 
and that's the first time I've ever felt that on a track race and I think it's like you say because it was a bit of a further distance um, I felt a bit more comfortable. night session not confidence boosting right. well it hurt a only lot. because you failing to interpret it correctly. <laughs> we did eight 800s with a 200 jog in between um, not I didn't really time them because I'm not that bothered about that it was just about trying to hit race effort for next week really mm. and I say that like we did the strides to warm up and we both pretty much said that whatever the pace today didn't really matter because it was just like you say maintaining that effort and um, I think we did that, uh, especially after the first one, when I thought, yeah, okay, let's let's call it at that. And then it was literally just do one more, one more, one more. And then it got to odd numbers, and then it was, well, it's can't, we can't stop on an odd number. And then we got to six. So I thought, oh, well, we'll start number seven. And then you never, uh, you never I always seven. finish. Yeah. And then I couldn't finish on seven, so we had to do eight. And that was the rules. <laughs> I, My think, own I think it. I think there's a. It's probably the same in whatever you do in life. You get to the end of something, and the last you sort of talk yourself into we're nearly there. The end of the training block, and the training block in some ways is harder than the race. So I think mentally, the last session of any training block is really difficult anyway, because you're so ready to get your rest and get your taper in, I'm trying to stay focused and, and not not react to feeling tired, which you're bound to at the end of the block is is difficult, yeah. but. Um, I kind of feel like I learnt a bit from London Marathon in that sense because the last the last couple of sessions for London you were you were quite down you were quite weeks. you were quite down about but yeah. actually it was just because it was the end of a very long training block and you were, mm. you know you were feeling tired which is inevitable mm -hmm. um, but yeah I, I feel pretty good about where we are yeah. like you know survived again talk, talking now after you know the last four weeks I feel like we're in you know in a completely different place from where we. Yeah. that point and yeah, lots changed couldn't, lots have done, couldn't have done any more so you just need to wrap you up in cotton wool now and get you to the race ready get to go get you to the church on time yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I might ask this one again next week but how do you feel about track now versus six weeks ago uh, I love it I know I really do and I feel like thinking now using it as more of a tool to get faster um, and even though it's because it's the same principle like going to the gym it all it all builds up to getting faster on the roads and I think deep down I know I'm not a track runner um, but that's okay because I don't I don't need to be I just need to well I don't need to do anything I enjoy running and whatever gets me faster and whatever keeps me happy then that's just the way it is <laughs> How do you feel about races on the track now? Because early in the season, you found them very intimidating. Um, I kind of wish I was doing a 5,000 track race this weekend. Um, and I don't actually know why. Um, but I feel like there's more there's more in the 5,000 because I felt more uh, within myself at a 5,000 than a 3K. Um, I think it was because mentally, I just thought 3K is gonna be ridiculously fast but in fact I ran the 5,000 faster than the pace of the 3k so I know it's all in my head um, but that's just takes practice and takes time and I'm willing to willing to try so and how do you feel about racing 10,000 slightly sick <laughs> um, but it's I've never done it before so I can't really I can't really expect it to feel like one one thing or another it's just it is what it is My first ever park run was at Warsaw and I found my training diary actually the other day and Dan and I were looking through it um, and I'd just written, um, oh my gosh, I came first lady at park run and fourth overall. I ran 17.40, I was so over the moon. Um, and it was just, 
I remember my coach at the time, I wrote in my book, um, I hope, hope he lets me do more park runs because I really enjoyed the atmosphere. And after my first park run, my friend Debbie came over to me and she said, oh my gosh, like you've just run that time. And I was like, how, how, have I? I just wanted to break 18 minutes. And she went, you do know that's really fast. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, and then she's like, you should join Birchfield Harriers. And I was like, oh, I don't, I don't, I'm not affiliated with anywhere at the minute. I said, but I'm, I'll think about it. Um, and then I just went home, didn't think anything of it. And then just got, I just fell in love with Parkrun from that day, really. So, say the world record, I'd, I'd love to do it, but I know that regardless of where I run, where I run, it's a, it is a matter of time because I am getting faster and as much as, not in a big headed way at all, it's just you train more, you just get faster, apparently. That's what Dan tells me anyway. <laughs> so it makes me a Biden like catch the, the rod. Um, but I just love part run, the whole atmosphere and the fact that no matter how fast or slow, um, everyone's valued the same. Everyone still shows up, everyone still runs. We all go for cake after, coffee after. We sit there till midday and think, oh, well, I should probably go home now. And then everyone's there, day up, week in, week out. And it's just a fantastic atmosphere that I feel honored to be a part of. Get me. Get me. Come on. Go on, Jack. Go on, Haley. Just in case we forget what time the uh, race starts. One of the compromises I had to make on the coaching side was to keep her really tired for that six weeks because of the amount of work we wanted to get in. What would have been lovely from a confidence point of view would be to have a little bit of a mini taper somewhere run a really fast race and you know use that as the as the thing to build the confidence from but i felt in terms of the physiology and the physical requirements of what she's going to need for saturday it didn't quite fit we had too much work to do so she did a load of races kind of tired and obviously there's a there's a time at the end of a race and that the other people look at and that she's aware of other people are looking at and all that kind of stuff so I guess I was relying a lot. I put all my eggs in the basket of, well, as soon as her legs freshen up in the taper week, she's gonna build in confidence dramatically because she's gonna be zipping and think, well, where, where have these come from? Um, and I guess that's the, you know, I knew they were coming, but it wasn't, she, she couldn't know that because she hasn't got the experience to know that that's how it works. And, I just want to watch it. I just want to watch her do her thing, and it's going to be great. And there's, there's absolutely nothing to lose now because the mental downside is being taken care of, which was a big tick you know we can now I now know that psychologically she's robust and she understands that the race is not the thing all the work and the fitness is a thing and the race is a one-off thing but we'll still have all that to take forward to the main goal anyway which is the Olympics and all that so it's kind of a free swing we're gonna have a strategy that means she's chasing people and I just know how fit she is and I wouldn't want her to be chasing me.
Going into the race, I felt really confident. I felt like the training had gone really well. Um, felt that whatever the pace was, I could at least withstand it for first half. And then I know I kind of get stronger throughout races generally, mentally and sometimes physically. Um, so I kind of thought we'll get through the first half and um, whatever happens, you, you know, you can hang on a lot longer than you think. Um, I felt great warming up. Uh, I felt like I was striding out, I felt going confident into the race. So everything shone positivity, which is strange for me. <laughs> um, but then the gun went and I wanted it to be over. It was just, don't know what happened. It, was, it wasn't my legs, my head, my body, it wasn't one specific thing. It was just, I wanted it to be over the second it started. And yeah. I feel hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? But I feel like the one thing you can never recreate is that environment and that scenario. You know, the only way to really practice it is to put yourself in it. And yeah. it's a very unforgiving environment, isn't it? And yeah. We tried to simulate it in some ways, but really what you need to develop is the ability to tune it out. And, and to some degree, that requires being immersed in it mm. a few more times. Um, and Just, so that was always the danger I guess but obviously it's the yeah. sort of thing that you don't I've considered it before but there's not a lot you can do so you try not to focus <laughs> on that but. Like, you know, just don't belong there. Well, you don't have to ever do anything that makes you sad if you don't want to. I don't really care about the racing, I just want you to be happy. No, but I felt so confident going into it, and, mm -hmm. and then just, it was just so many laps. And I was like, oh, just there's a lot of laps, 25. But everyone else can do it and I can't. I mean, like, look, you choked, you froze, and that can happen, right? And, yeah. And it was a massive lesson, it was horrible, really one of the worst yeah. like, evenings I can remember, but it's done now and mm. like it's it definitely taught us a massive lesson so yeah it's just I felt nothing but fear and running generally doesn't make me feel like that sometimes do but not all the time so how did you feel in the week after Highgate about your running about where you'd got with your prep just be completely honest where were you at what were you thinking what's the point uh, I thought why do I do all this to myself when I can't perform when it matters um, and what really does matter to me is running well, running strong and enjoying my running and that night it was just only could be described as hell for me and it should have been an amazing event and like everyone was so positive and what an amazing atmosphere and um, but all I kept thinking was I feel like I'm in a goldfish bowl and I feel even though people aren't watching you in particular, I just felt completely just alone. Even though there was a, a massive, massive crowd of people and I just felt petrified. And it was just so unknown that it was, well it's like with anything in life, you, the first time you ever do something, it's, it's fear of the unknown. And 
the second the gun went and it was I almost felt my eyes widen and my throat close and it was just panic Great start. Great start. We've spent a lot of time working with uh, Andy Lane <laughs> to try and convince me that running isn't a threat. Um, running is just running. You do it because you love running. And I do really love running. And we've decided before every race we'll get together um, and put down what we kind of want to get out of the race, um, what it means, whether um, what sort of mental cues I can use, um, psychological tips to try and train in, which seemed to work today, so that was handy. Um, or that might have been the strawberry splits I ate before <laughs> the session. Um, but yeah, like running means so much to me that I don't ever want to let it make me feel like that. Because, yeah, it was horrible. And I know I have retired many, many times, but that was that was genuinely, I don't see the point. I uh, cried myself to sleep on the bathroom floor because I just didn't, I just didn't know what to do. And yeah, it was bad, but I'm a bit of a drunk. I'm either up here or down here. <laughs> I think the race was at three o'clock and about one o'clock I just said to Dan I can't do it I can't do it and he's like what can't you do and I was like I don't know and he said what's it and I was like I don't know I just I just can't do it and he went but what is it about it that you don't love you don't you love running you love running uh, fast you like racing um, you're on your home turf and I was like I don't, I don't know I just and it just it was petrifying and um, we went into the High Performance Centre where uh, every, all the athletes were and um, I just remember walking in thinking, oh my god, all this is so normal for them and um, it just feels so out of my depth and, and I went, you know what, just enjoy it and um, I just was like, yeah, no, no, this is horrible and it felt like such a threat but then about 10 to 3, uh, it was really strange, all of a sudden this wave came across me and I just thought, this is really cool. <laughs> The fact that I'm racing the best 5,000 meter runners in Britain and I'm training for a marathon and the fact that I got invited anyway, it just felt like, you know what, enjoy it because one, the track's going to be knocked down anyway, so <laughs> I was like, the last race that we could have done there and and then it just I just stayed that excitement and I just thought, there's nothing to lose. I've got no pressure. I'm a marathon runner. Just go and enjoy it and, and I did. and. We set off in the race and I said, whatever happens, I'm going to be in it. I'm going to be in the race. I'm not going to sit back and watch it. I said, because I want to get the most out of it, regardless of how it feels. So, yeah. so what do you think was different to Highgate? Because you mm. said to me about half an hour before I left you, it was probably about half twelve or so, mm -hmm. that you were so worried that you'd feel the same way as you did at Highgate mm -hmm. and that you just sort of freeze. So what yeah. was different this time? I don't know. I don't know whether it was the fact that all my family were there, um, the fact that because Highgate went so badly, I just thought, you know what, I don't want to be that upset again, I don't want to let myself down, I don't want to let Dan down, I don't want to let my family down, and it was just, whatever, however I felt, it wasn't even going to come into it, it was just, however my body felt, I was just going to tell myself, it's lying to you, it's lying to you because as soon as I stopped at Highgate, I knew something wasn't right. I don't know what it was, but I thought whether it was in my head or whether it wasn't, even if I did feel like that, I wasn't, I wasn't gonna let it beat me. And I think it was a ma um, process of mind over matter. And I just thought, I'm not letting something as 
as silly as this beat me and and I just absolutely loved it the whole buzz of the stadium the crowds and I just thought you know what lap it up because you're only going to get this opportunity once it's only going to be the first time you do it once and I loved it I think the only thing I'm going to do is can see it as a training run. I think that's all I can do. Um, it scares me because it's a lot of laps um, and I feel like once your head goes I find it very difficult to get it back on again. Um, but I say I'll be running with the training group um, with Dan and, and Ince. We'll be there together to just kind of take a lap each and work together to just kind of put down a good time um, but not um, from from what Dan said anyway, not flat out 10k. So we've got a big few weeks coming up, so I don't think it's going to be absolutely flawed at the end, but I probably will be anyway. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just going to take it as stay in the pack and just do what you can. And your body definitely does lie to you. My body just tells me that it's really hard and I just tell it's going to do it anyway, so you might as well shut up. <laughs> I've certainly learned that I can run a lot faster than I thought. Um, and by doing all this speed work, it's made marathon pace and marathon effort feel like I'm absolutely flying. So even though all the anxiety and I think every, every single scenario that we could have possibly encountered from track running, we definitely have 10 times over. So I feel like whatever the marathon throws at me now, there's nothing that I haven't dealt with because the track was the worst thing I could imagine. I just felt so exposed and just really vulnerable. Um, whereas things with the marathon, it finds you out. It's you can't go into it without being fully ready for it. And if you have one sort of yeah, it separate it separates people from <laughs> the norm really. And I think to run a marathon, it's certainly not normal. And then to race a marathon is crazy and endurance is like the test sessions like tonight it the endurance is where i've really 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 enjoy even though there's a lot of laps around the track it's it's just running and i just love i feel like i can just go forever and i think that's where i end up being a marathon runner and not a track runner but we'll see <laughs> Well done Hayley, first 10,000 meter TV on the track, excellent running, finish. I really actually enjoy running on the track now, because I can kind of see it as a way of, as opposed to ticking off a mile, it's ticking off a lap, and yeah, don't get me wrong, 25 laps is a long way, but it's also only 25 times to get it right and if I set off too quickly then it's going to be a long 24 laps <laughs> um, and I want to enjoy it but I also want to make sure that I give it absolutely everything but I'm also so inexperienced on a track and there's just no pressure. I know that I've learned so much this training block that 
is going to keep me in stead for the rest of my career, which is hopefully a long, healthy and happy one, as opposed to, I don't want to run my PBs at, at 26, because then what a boring 10 years it'll be. 